All right, YouTube. We found something on Facebook this time. Craig's letting us down. So uh, we got Athena loaded up. Now let's go buy it. All right, YouTube. Um, I just got done filming the video that you're about to watch. It's the next day, spoiler alert. Um, and basically I wanted to come on here real quick and let you know that I've got my 10 videos now um, edited and ready to upload. So I'm gonna start letting them come out. I'm gonna do two days a week. I'm gonna try to do um, Saturdays and Mondays. So it's Monday right now. It's not gonna go up today. It'll go up Saturday. Uh, I gotta edit it obviously. But um, I'm gonna do my best to keep the comment coming or the con yeah, content coming now. I can't talk, words are hard. But um, you know, you're gonna see a bunch of videos that go back to, I mean, February, and they're, they're not all gonna be in order. Um, for example, like a lot of it's still working on the deck and finishing the deck. Um, and then some of it's gonna be taking trees down. I had a couple other ones in there. I forget what they were, to be honest with you. Uh, one was fixing my drone. So they're not gonna come up in chronological order. You'll probably catch on to that. Uh, I'm gonna try to keep the projects in chronological order as best as I possibly can, but if you see me working on something and you notice the deck in the background, uh, it's gonna happen, I'm sorry. Um, in my opinion, the deck videos are kind of boring, so I'm not gonna just throw them all up at once. Uh, I might do like a deck video and then maybe the drone video and another deck video and I don't know, maybe some other project in between. Uh, and I might pepper in some current stuff depending on what tomorrow brings and uh, what I film then. You know, I don't know. But we're back to kind of filming. I'd say I'm filming every other day maybe. Something I got going on. Um, still doing some paperwork in the background that takes up a lot of time. Still doing projects that I don't film um, that takes up a lot of my time. But we're not working as much right now with everything going on in the world. So, yeah. That's basically that. And uh, I'm going to bring you back to the video. So, enjoy. YouTube, so we're heading back now. I don't know if you can see out the back window or not. Uh, yeah, it looks like you can actually. I can see kind of in the mirror there. We picked ourselves up a Miller Trailblazer 325 EFI model. Uh, we're heading back now from New York, actually. We're on the border of Northern Jersey and New York State. And uh, the gentleman we picked it up from was very nice, but he was in a rush. When we pulled up, he already had it on forklift, so we didn't have much time to film anything putting it in the truck. Uh, we got it for a phenomenal price. 
price probably because it doesn't work. Um, don't you laugh at me. <laughs> it doesn't weld. Uh, it starts and runs and the generator functions. Um, he told me that he diagnosed it himself over the phone with Miller. It needs a circuit board. Uh, told me which circuit board it is. I've got no real reason to doubt him. Um, he even told me how much he was quoted for the repair. And uh, I think we'll still come out very far ahead if, uh, if it is the price that he said it is. So all in all, we're, we're happy. Well, I'm happy with it. Um, and I guess we'll uh, catch up with you when we get back. We've got a solid two hour drive home still. So yeah, see you then. All right, YouTube, good morning. It's uh, the next day. It's Monday, April 20th now. Uh, this video is probably going to go up on Saturday, April 24th or 5th or something. Oh, math is hard at this hour. Um, anyway, I got it unloaded last night, and uh, I did fire it up real quick and confirmed that it does not weld, and it gives me an error code, which I can't find the answer to. I'll... Uh, put that up on the screen real quick but um i did some research a little bit last night i talked to some good people um talked to wade he's got the same um a much newer version but he's got the same model i talked to wes over at burning dinosaurs because he is an electrical genius and i uh, described the issues that I'm told about it, and he confirmed that it sounds about right. He was going to look into it some as well. I talked to Michael Berg this morning. He's got the, he's like Wade. He's got a nice newer one uh, with all the bells and whistles. It's a really nice machine, actually. Anyway, I'm um, looking through the manual this morning, or last night, rather, at work. Uh, I found out that there's a couple fuses on it that it could be though it's not likely and like i said based on i mean the guy seems like he was pretty honest when he sold it to me based on everything he said <coughs> excuse me about troubleshooting it with miller over the phone it's probably going to be the circuit board and the circuit board actually attaches to these knobs and it, it has this display screen behind it's right behind the front panel um and i looked it up and it's a hell of a lot more expensive than um and he said it was. <laughs> I don't know if it went up recently in two years. I don't know if he remembered wrong. I don't know if he just wasn't telling me right. I don't, I don't know. But uh, the fact of the matter is, it's my machine now. And uh, we're going to get it going one way or another. I've got, uh, got plans for it in the works. It's going to be a little bit before um, I'm ready to finish the plans for it. But this is the first step in a business I'm considering starting i guess so uh i'll probably look it over some real quick i'm not going to spend too much time on it realistically it's not a priority we just kind of saw it come up it was a good deal or so i thought and i still think it was a good deal so we jumped on it that's why we picked it up but it's uh it is no no way a priority right now of mine so i can get it together relatively cheap i will to have it around right now the generator does function on it it's a 12,000 watt generator so it'll uh it'll power my house a little better than my 7,000 watt briggs and stratton over there if uh if it came down to it that's pretty cool um but yeah like i said i'm gonna check the basics of it and i'm probably gonna wait to hear back from wes and then we'll see um where we go from there so yeah that's the plan
All right, YouTube, I found it. I don't know what I found or why I found it, but I found it. Pretty sure this is the circuit board that is in question. Um, definitely evidence someone was in here. All these uh, studs that hold the board to the unit were loose. Um, this knob was rusted in place, though, which doesn't exactly fit the suggestion that somebody had this off. Um, you know, even recently, and then it sat in the garage, which is the story I'm told. So I'm not too sure. I'm going to uh, pull the component or the plugs off, get the board out, check the connections on the plugs at least. You know, I'm trying to do everything that I can think to do that's free at the moment. I don't actually expect any of this to work, to be completely honest with you. But it doesn't cost me anything but a cup of coffee to sit here and try. And honestly, if I fry the board, 90 percent chance it's already the issue anyway so did i really lose also this part number i think that's the part number doesn't match up to what i found online so i'm gonna have to search that again so uh let me unplug all this crap and we'll catch back up all right youtube i got it out um i don't see any evidence of failure i was expecting a burnt solder joint a pop microprocessor um transistors are healthy I only know so much about what I'm looking at here but um, everything that I've ever been told and taught about electrical component failure I don't see um, for what it's worth I did find corrosion on this plug here and this plug here and I'll, I'll try to put pictures in because I'm not going to be able to actually show you the plug without a light but, um, I don't know. I guess I'll be sending some information over to Wes. Oh, I thought I saw a burn mark, but nope, no burn mark. So, um, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but I did, when I did the research on this thing, um, last night, I'm trying to find a place to put it that's not going to be metal or metallic. There, rubber and fiberglass. Um... When I did research on it last night, the thing that I found a few times is, one, these machines are notorious for running hot, and they do have some type of a thermal fuse, uh, which the error code that it's given me makes me think thermal, but I, I don't know yet. I had to find that and, ch and test it. Um, and secondly, what I've read is that they're notorious for losing their upper RPM setting by a few, like maybe 100 RPMs. Evidently that this machine is so sensitive though, those few hundred RPMs are enough to offset the cycle speed in the generator and really screw with the components on the circuit board. In other words, residential electricity here in the United States is uh, 60 hertz, which means that it... it flops you know positive ground positive ground 60 times a second essentially and because this welder is nothing more than a generator um the generator needs to create that perfect cycle rating that it needs and in this case it's 62 and a half hertz is what they want to see so the people that i read from and one of them supposedly is a miller technician he seems to know what he's talking about so i'm not discrediting him i just don't trust anybody without knowing them um but what he says is you're supposed to stick your meter in the 110 volt receptacles on it, which are down here, 120 volt, 110 volt, whatever. Um, and you're supposed to adjust, put it in high RPM and adjust your uh, governor or your, your, yeah, your governor, your high speed RPM governor until you get 62 and a half hertz out of that receptacle. And I know this because some of the machinery that I work on in my day job we have generators that are driven by hydraulics and I need to adjust the hydraulic flow to the generator based on ambient temperatures. So, you know, in the dead of winter, when fluid tends to be thicker, I need to allow for more flow to the generator motor um, to get the cycle speed up correctly or it'll start messing with sensitive electronics. Um, and then if, you know, vice versa, if it's really hot out and the fluid's really thin, it flows more, I have to turn the flow down to the generator uh, to keep that 60 hertz. 
Now at work with what I deal with, I have a threshold of about 10%, so six hertz in either direction, and I'm okay. Um, now, in my experience, and what I discussed briefly with Wes, is that at work, when I have a, a machine that the cycle's out of, out of limits and it starts do doing screwy stuff, I just have to dial it in. And when I get to that 60 hertz threshold, or where, yeah, 60 hertz is what I need to be at. When I get to that threshold, everything works fine. It doesn't do any permanent damage. And, you know, uh, what I got from Wes, because I was, I'm sorry, buddy, I was texting you real late last night. Um, I work night shifts, so that's normal for me. But, uh, anyway, what he was, you know, starting to say uh, was that it seems like a, lo a low frequency can definitely damage sensitive electronics like that. Um, and again, just cause I've never seen it doesn't mean it's not possible. A lot of the machinery that I work with does not have this kind of electronics in it. It has some sensitive stuff, but nothing, um, of this surface mount printed circuit boards and stuff like that. We all have logic boards. Anyway, I'm rambling now. So, um, I'm probably going to leave this here. Like I said, this isn't a priority, and, uh, you know, I was just killing some time, honestly. And I'm, I'm antsy because I just got it, so I want to see. It's got two fuel filters. Check that out. Filter for your filter's filter. Anyway, that's my ADD kicking in, which means it's time for more coffee. So, um, yeah, this is where we're at. This is the uh, Trailblazer 325 EFI. Uh, 12,000 watt professional series generator and um, yeah you know again even if it ends up costing me $1,300 for that circuit board I still feel like I came out pretty ahead I'll still be into it a lot less than what I see them selling for um, knowing about the voltage or the the cycle issue that they're quote unquote known for now it's not a big deal because I, you know, I can just adjust it accordingly. And uh, the guy said that he's seen it on machines as low as 50 hours that they can knock out of their RPM setting. Um, I don't know if that has something to do with it being an EFI unit or not. It shouldn't, but who knows? I haven't been in the small engine world in a while, so I, I don't know. But, um, you know, if, if I check it every 10 or 15 hours or even once a week, if I just toss a meter into it, it ain't that big of a deal. Um, it takes about 10 seconds to do, you know, and I would imagine a high speed RPM adjustment uh, should be right down under here somewhere. It shouldn't be too hard to get to. And once you've done it a couple times, I'm sure it'll be even easier. I can see the linkage down there. Okay, there we go. So it's completely... Oh, it's electronically controlled, which would make sense because it's load sensing. Okay. So what this machine does is it has a an amperage, um, amperage sensing. I can't think of the damn name for it. Someone will comment on there. It senses the amperage coming out of it, and it can determine its load, and it's supposed to change its engine RPM speed based on the load that it's under um, to say, save fuel and stuff and overcomplicate everything because people won't spend three dollars on another gallon of fuel for the day I, I don't know i know i know it adds up but seriously yeah whatever <laughs> i'm gonna stop ranting <laughs> we're uh, we're gonna call this here i thank you guys for watching as always and uh hopefully we'll, this will be the start to more videos coming up like i said i've got some uh on reserve now i'm gonna start posting I think I'm going to do Saturday and Monday. I was talking to uh, Mikey Dirt Perfect. And that seems to be a good uh, good schedule to start on. And I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'll uh, see you guys soon. This is where we're at with the Trailblazer. I don't know when we'll revisit this. But um, hopefully sooner rather than later. So yeah. See you later.